الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد we resume this afternoon our classes in the reading of the great and beneficial work of Um Abdullah al Wadiya Hafidah Allah Taala the daughter of the great the great scholar and the Imam from the Imams of the Sunnah, as Shaykh Mukbil Ibn Hadi al Wadi'i, Rahimahullahu Ta'ala, the work entitled Nasihati Lil Nisa, my advice, my advice to to the women. My advice to the women. And we continue and resume from where we had where we had left off, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to facilitate for us a good understanding and to make the class is beneficial for us and to grant us insight in his religion and uh, success to implement the knowledge in our life and to learn the way of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with diligence and with sincerity and with truthfulness and honesty and to implement that in our lives and to make the knowledge a light for us and a proof for us and not against us. In our previous classes we were reading in the chapter that the author she had mentioned Hafidah Allah Ta'ala Tarbiyat Al-Awlad Tarbiyatu al-awlad, the issue of cultivating and raising and uh, nourishing and teaching and educating the children and disciplining them. And she had mentioned in this chapter a number of great benefits. And she mentioned them point by point, one, one after the other. And we have read a number of these points in our previous, in our previous classes. And we have reached the point, the point number 12. When she mentions in her advice for her sisters with regards to raising and teaching and cultivating and disciplining the children. She says, Ausi Wadadaki, Bima Ausa Lukmanu Wadadahu. Kale Ta'ala, with Kala Lukmanu Libinihi, Wahu Yaidu, Yabunaye, Latushrik Billa, in the Shirkala Vulmun Avim, Ila Kaulihi, Waksid Fi Meshika, Wakbub Min Sotika. In Ankara Aswati, in Ankara Al Aswati, the Sotul Hamir. So she mentioned in her beneficial advice for her sisters in this twelfth point, Ausi Wadadaki, Bima Ausa Lukmanu Wadadahu, that you, my noble sister, you should advise and order and direct your child to that which Lukman, to that which Lukman had directed his child. Allah the Most High, He says, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ And Allah, He mentioned in His book with regards to the story of Luqman and the wasiya, the wasiya of Luqman, which He had given an admonishment and an advice and direction and guidance and ordered His Son with a number of great commandments and advices and benefits. And Allah, He says, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ And remember, Whenever Luqman he said, Libnihi, whenever Luqman he said to his son, Wahuwa Ya'iduhu Ya Bunaya, while he is admonishing him and advising him. The people of Nara, as they mentioned the admonishment, it is to encourage the people to do something good and to clarify that in the best manner and to mention the evidences with regards to that. And to mention the evidences with regards to that, to order the people with the good and to encourage them by mentioning the virtue of that and the benefit of that and the reward of that, and likewise the evidence as well. And to forbid and to reprimand the people and to turn them away from the evil and that which is not allowed by clarifying for them the evils of that and the foul outcome of that and the bad result of those who fall into that which is impermissible, all, all coupled with good intention and clarifying with detailed evidence to the best of one's ability. This is admonishment. This is called al-maw'idah, or al-wa'adhu. Wa huwa ya'idhuhu, while he gives him an admonishment. And remember what Luqman, he said to his son whenever he is advising him and admonishing him. Ya bunayya, oh my beloved son, la tushrik billah. La tushrik billah, inna shirka la dhulmun azim. Oh my beloved son, do not associate partners with Allah. Oh, my beloved son, do not associate partners with Allah. So here she is mentioning Hafidah Allah Ta'ala that you, my noble sister, you should admonish and advise and order your child with the same thing that the man he ordered his child with in these noble verses. And these most beneficial and noble verses. And these verses here 
there about the wasiya of Luqman Libnihi, the advice and the admonishment of Luqman that he had given to his son. And they consist of some of the most beneficial advices and some of the greatest direction and guidance that one could give to another person, especially someone who is beloved to him like his own child. So the advice of the author, my noble sister, is that you should likewise advise your child in the same manner, with the same advices and likewise in the same manner. And there are great benefits in these verses. And she mentioned them in summarization, and from the first verse to the last verse. And if we read in the Book of Allah, this is approximately one whole page. A whole page of advice from the top of the page to the bottom of, of the page about the wasiyah of Luqman to his, to his noble son. So in order for you, my noble sister, to advise your child with the likes of these affairs, you must be aware of this advice and likewise have some detailed understanding of these advices and how to give them. So there is advice here that he's giving and direction and guidance and likewise there's a manner that he's performing that. There's a manner that he's performing that in the best and the most dull and easiest way. And this is indicated from the beginning, from the beginning, uh, of the advice that, that he mentions. وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ يَا بُنَيَّ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ And whenever Luqman he said to his son while he's admonishing him. So therefore the father and the mother, the guardian, and those who have others under their care, from time to time they have to admonish them. They have to admonish their children and remind them and direct them and mention for them advices and guidances, beginning with that which is most important, at the head of the affair, the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's beautiful how he mentions this in this manner. What did he say? Whenever he's advising him to his son, Ya Bunayya, Ya Bunayya, O oh my beloved son. So this is a beautiful manner of addressing a person, addressing a child specifically or somebody who was younger. Uh, under a person, under his authority and the likes, to call him by this name, Ya Bunayya. Or for example, for the, for the female, Ya Bunayyati. Similarly, similarly has the same manner. And this is called Ism Tasqir. And this is mentioned sometimes to be kind, to be gentle, and to be nice. And it could be translated to mean my little son. Or even more, even more uh, affectionate to be to mean my beloved son, my young, my little beloved son. Any meaning that the person here, he's trying to draw close to the person and be kind and be gentle. And also the fact that he's saying something that is of utmost importance and beneficial. Ya bunayya, la tushrik billah. Do not associate partners with Allah. La tushrik billah. Do not associate partners with Allah whatsoever, not in His Lordship, and not in His beautiful names and attributes, and not in His worship, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah alone, He is the creator, and the provider, and the sustainer of all things. Allah alone, He is the one who is alive and never dies. Allah alone, He is the one who sends the rain from the sky. Allah alone, He is the one who has the ultimate command, supreme knowledge and wisdom, and nothing happens in His kingdom except with His authority, tabaraka wa ta'ala, lahul mulk. Subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise Allah alone he is the one who has the attributes of perfection Allah alone he is the one who knows and hears and sees all things and nothing is hidden from him Subhanahu wa ta'ala so believe in him and put your faith and trust and reliance in him alone and attach your heart to Allah alone and not to anything from the creation Ya bunayya la tushrik billah and therefore do not direct any actions of worship except to him alone Subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the great the great advice of Luqman Libnihi to his son, Ya Bunayya la tushrik billah. But likewise, after that, he clarified for his son the wisdom behind that as well, prohibiting him from violating this great right, the right of Allah Azza wa Jal, from associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any aspect, in any aspect, in his worship, or in his beautiful names and attributes, or in his authority and command and lordship, in his dominion and kingdom, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in shirka. La dhulmun azim, because a shirk is a great act of oppression, a great act of oppression, and the one who associates partners with Allah Azza wa Jalla in any manner, 
a minor partner or a major partner, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will leave that. And He will leave that person and the one that He is associating partners with. And Allah, He will not accept that action. And a person, He will be left to Himself. So therefore, this is from the greatest actions of oppression that a person could do. That He will put His faith or His trust or His reliance or that He will believe something has authority and command besides Allah Azza wa Jal. And that something is worthy of worship and devotion. And He would attach His heart to the creation besides Allah. And the creation is weak and deficient from every aspect and in entire need of Allah Azza wa Jal alone. And Allah, He is complete and perfect in every aspect and He has no needs whatsoever. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who will al ghani al hamid. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. So to put one's trust and reliance and faith or to call on someone besides Allah with hope and with fear. This is from the worst of all oppression that one could do to his own soul and the greatest failure. This is the worst of all oppression that one could do to his own soul and the greatest of all fa failure. وَرِيَذُ billah. It has been reported authentically uh, from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said that Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, أَنَا أَغْنَى الشُرُكَيْ أَنَا الشِرْكِ مَنْ أَمِلَ أَمَلًا أَشْرَكَ فِي مَعِي غَيْرِي تَرَكْتُهُ وَشِرْكَ That I am the most free and of no need of any partners and anyone who does an action or a deed and he made and he associated in that action another partner with me then I will leave him and his partner. Then I will leave him and his partner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has no need for anything whatsoever. He is the one who feeds and he's not fed and he is the one who provides and no one provides for him and he is the one who grants protection alone and no one can protect against him. So therefore sister, you have to learn the tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal in great detail and understand that properly and believe in that and then likewise teach your child that issue and those details in the same manner like Luqman, he taught his son, Ya Bunayya with gentleness, with kindness, and hoping and wanting good for him. لا تشرك بالله Beginning with that, which is most important first and foremost, the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. And uh, the, the command, the command for the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal and the prohibition of, of a shirk and associating partners with Allah in any form and in, in any manner. In any form and in any manner. And this is the greatest of all affairs. And this is the wisdom from our creation. Ya Bunayya, O my beloved son, la tushrik billah, do not associate partners with Allah Azza wa Jal whatsoever. Inna shirka, inna shirka la dhulmun azim. And then uh, the admonishment and uh, the advice, it continues from uh, Luqman. Wa wassayna al-insana bi walidayhi hamalatu ummuhu wahnan ala wahnan wa fisaluhu fi amayn. And after the advice of giving the greatest right, the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to be singled out alone with all actions of worship and to not associate partners with him whatsoever, then Luqman, he began to admonish his son with regards to the greatest right after that from the people and that is the right of the parents. Those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed and made them a reason and a means for the existence of the child. That the child is created in the, the womb of the mother. And this is after that which had occurred between the love and affection and the relationship with the, with the father. So therefore the mother and the father, they have the greatest rights upon the child from mankind, from the people. And therefore, the admonishment and the advice after the advice for the right of Allah Azza wa Jal, now it moves to the advice of giving the parents their right. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has advised the human being, he has, he has advised the human being to be kind and to be nice and to be gentle and merciful to to his parents and from the wisdom behind that Allah he clarified because the mother she has carried him in hardship and difficulty and likewise given birth to him in hardship and difficulty <laughs> that the mother has carried him in hardship upon hardship and his weaning is in two years so this is the clarification of the wisdom behind why one should be kind to his parents, especially his mother. Because his mother bore him in her womb and carried him. And the child was created and fashioned and formed by the power and authority and the command and permission of Allah in the womb of his mother. And this is an amazing affair indicating the greatness of Allah and the fact that he alone is worthy of worship. 
subhanahu wa ta'ala. But likewise, the mother in this process is going through a great hardship and difficulty, bearing that creation and carrying that child. And then soon, that child will begin to be formed in her womb and also likewise sharing the nourishment that she has along with her. And then it becomes heavy. And then after that, she gives birth, which is from the greatest of pains that the human being can experience. And then after that, likewise, she will continue to carry that child and keep it with her at every time and every place and feed it and provide for it with breastfeeding and nourishment and care and concern cleaning it and keeping it safe and warm and keeping it clean and uh, free from any harm looking after it whenever it's not able to defend or perfect or protect itself whatsoever so therefore it's incumbent for the child to show thanks to Allah by singling him out alone with all actions of worship and using his blessings and his obedience subhanahu wa ta'ala and not using his blessings to disobey Allah and likewise to be honorable and to be respectful and to be kind to the parents, especially the mother. Especially the mother, but likewise the father. And the Prophet وسلم, he said, Rida Rabbi fi Rida al -wadid. That the pleasure of the Lord is at the pleasure of the parent, at the pleasure of the father, specifically here. And likewise the Prophet وسلم, he ordered that one he must be kind to his parents. The, that he must be kind to his parents, especially his mother. Whenever a man, he came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, man abar. Oh, Messenger of Allah, who should I be obedient, kind, and nice to? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ummaka. And then the, the person, he said, and, and then who? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ummaka. He said, and then who? He said, Ummaka. He said, and then who? He said, Abak. And he mentioned that one should be kind and nice and obedient to the mother three times in a row back to back. And this is an indication to what is mentioned here. And likewise in Surah Al-Ahqaf about the obligation of being obedient to the parents because the mother, she has a greater right. The fact that she bore the child in her womb and then gave birth to the child likewise and then spent those two years breastfeeding the child as well. So these are three great actions of kindness and goodness and also burdens that the mother she bore with regards to the child that the father he did not share in. So therefore her right from this aspect is greater. Although likewise the right of the father is great. And the pleasure of the Lord is in the pleasure of the father. Meaning that if you want Allah to be pleased with you, you must please and be kind and nice to your father. And if that's the case with the father, then even more rightful for the mother. But as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned, لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الله That there is no obedience to the creation in the disobedience of Allah. And likewise Allah he refers to this issue here and the verses they, they continue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَحْنٍ عَلَى وَحْنٍ وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنٍ أَنْ إِشْكُوا لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكَ إِلَيَّ الْمَصِيرِ That you must show thanks to me. Show thanks to me by using the bounties and favors and blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal in His obedience and to refrain and avoid using those favors and blessings in His disobedience subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise to be thankful to the parents, meaning to be kind for them. Meaning to be kind to them and obedient to them and that which is allowed and permissible. إِلَيَّ الْمَصِيرِ And a reminder that to Allah is the return. Meaning the final outcome and the destination is that the people are returning to Allah. And He will ask each and every one of us about, about our deeds and about our deen and about our tawheed and about our obedience to him and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about fulfilling his rights and the rights of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam first and foremost with obedience and with compliance and with submission and surrender and likewise with the regards to the rights of mankind and at the head of them the rights of the parents so this is an indication of accountability ilayya al-masir ilayya al-masir and to me is the return and then allah he mentioned the affair about the obligation of obeying the parents except in that which is not allowed. When jahadaka ala and tushrika bi ma laysa laka bihi ilmun fala tuti'huma wa sahibahuma fi dunya ma'rufa. And if they strive against you, meaning your parents, and if they strive against you to make you associate partners with me in something you have no knowledge of, then uh, do not obey them in that. 
and accompany them in this life in a good and noble manner. But accompany them in this life in a good and noble manner. So here we see that the admonishment it began to not make shirk whatsoever. But then whenever the obedience of the parents is mentioned, even if they order themselves to commit that great crime, which is dhulmun azim, that one, it is not allowed for him to obey his parents in that. That one must not obey his parents in that. But the point now is, how would he disobey his parents? And how would he not uh, listen to them if they order him to commit shirk? Or any of or any other actions of dis, of disobedience which is lesser than that, wasahibuhuma fid dunya ma'rufa. Falatuhuma wasahibuhuma fid dunya ma'rufa. Then you must not obey them in that. Allah he didn't say that you turn away from them and disrespect them or you be harsh to them or rude them. Rather he said, but you do not obey them in that, but you accompany them in this life with goodness. So the people of knowledge, they mentioned that even if the parents, they order a child to disobey Allah. For example, like here, the greatest action of disobedience, which is to, to associate partners in worship with Allah, one will not obey his parents in that. But he will disobey them with regards to that in a noble and good manner, without disrespecting them or belittling them or being harsh and rude with them. Rather, وَصَاحِبُهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَ Even if they strive hard against you, both of them together, to cause you to make shirk or to leave your religion or to do some action of disobedience to Allah, that's do, do some action that's considered disobedience to Allah or His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَلَا تُضِعْهُمَا You must not obey them in that. وَصَاحِبُهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَ but along with that, you still must accompany them in this life and with, with goodness and nobility. With goodness and nobility. This is a clarification of the great right of the parents. It's not allowed to disrespect them. Not if they're upon shirk, not if they're upon kufr, not if they're upon Christianity, not if they're upon innovation, not if they're upon deviation. One, he must not obey them in the falsehood that they call to or that they ask for or that they request, but he will obey them, and other than that, from that which is allowed, and even then, all the while he will be kind and merciful, and he will have uh, a, a noble, a noble manner. He will deal with them in the most noble and dignified manner. This is the obligation. Then Allah He says, "What tabi' sabila man anaba ilayya, thumma ilayya marjiukum faunabiukum bima kuntum taamalun." And you must follow the path of those who repent to me with humbleness. وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيَّ And follow the path of those who make arinaba. Arinaba is sincere repentance and returning to Allah with devotion and sincerity and trust and reliance. You must follow the path of those who make arinaba. And that first and foremost is the path of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Can you shut the door please? Barakallah feek. And that is the path of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. And here in this portion of this noble verse is an indication of the obligation of following the noble companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because first and foremost, they are those who had made arinaba to Allah azza wa jal. وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيْهِ And follow the path of those who devote themselves with repentance and sincerity and uh, sincere devotion to me alone follow their path meaning the path of the companions radiyallahu anhum who are upon the path of the messenger muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thumma ilayya marji'ukum fa'unabi'ukum bima kuntum ta'malun and then after that the return is to me the return is to me meaning the return is to allah and allah he would inform you of that which you used to do all of this is an admonition and a reminder of the importance of the actions and deeds that a person he will be held accountable for everything that he has mentioned with his tongue and everything that he has looked at with his eyes and listened with his ears and likewise that which he desires and his intentions they will all be taken to account on the day of resurrection and nothing will be left and all of it is written in a book and that is very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now the admonishment in these noble verses they continue and look man he says ya bunayya ya bunayya again the way that he is addressing him and this is the way that you should address your child likewise whenever you advise them and admonish them or whenever you direct them or mention guidance for them or whenever they make a mistake and you want to correct them. You should not be harsh. You should not have a tongue that is spiteful or that is rude or that is harsh on a tone that is disrespectful or degrading but rather with a tone and with a tongue and with speech that is hoping good for the person, hoping good for the child so that it is closer to his heart 
and more easy and beneficial for them to accept the advice and to follow that. Ya Bunayya, O my beloved son, إِنَّهَا إِن تَكُمْ مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْدَلٍ فَتَكُمْ فِي صَقْرَةٍ أَوْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ أَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَأْتِ بِهَا اللَّهِ يَأْتِ يَأْتِ بِهَا اللَّهِ He says, O my beloved son, if there is something that is the weight of a mustard grain, the weight of the uh, the grain of a mustard seed, يعني the smallest of all things, the smallest and the littlest of, of all things, if there is something the weight of the likes of a mustard grain, and it would be in the middle of a rock, fi sahra, it's found in a rock, something that is this small, something that is this little, that's found in a rock, or it's found anywhere in the heavens or in the earth, yati bi Allah, that indeed Allah, He will bring it. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows about it, and He's aware of it, and it will be taken to account. That anything that you do, no matter how small or minute it may be, or anywhere you may be, whether the people can see you or not, Allah Azza wa Jal, He's aware of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can see that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can hear all things and nothing is hidden from Him. Yati bih Allah, Allah, He will bring it and He will take the people to account for every last, for every last uh, affair, for every last issue and affair for every last issue and affair so therefore you must fear Allah this is a great admonishment and reminder that what he must remind the children especially in these days whenever many times they may run and find a place alone so they believe alone from the eyes of the people and the eyes of the parents and the siblings in the home where they have a phone and a device and they're looking at things that are not allowed or reading things that are not permissible or commuting or communicating with people that is not good to communicate with that could be a means of failure and misguidance if they continue to have the communication so to cultivate this belief in their heart the creed of tawheed and the fact that allah Azza wa Jal, he has the attributes of perfection and nothing is hidden from him and his knowledge is supreme and encompassing all things and allah Azza wa Jal, he is aware of every statement and deed and even that which crosses our minds and our hearts la takhtha alayhi khafiyah Nothing is hidden from him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, alimun bidhati sudur. That he has supreme knowledge of that which is in the breast of all of mankind. Alimun ghaibi wa shahada. Alimun ghaibi wa shahada. He is the one who has supreme knowledge of that which is seen and that which is unseen. So to cultivate in the heart, to cultivate this in the heart of a believer is of utmost importance and of the greatest benefit and the wisdom behind our creation. So therefore, likewise, the parent. The mother here specifically, she must cultivate that, that tawheed and nourish that and raise that, the fitrah in the heart of the child so that they believe and they remember Allah Azza wa Jal and then in this manner they will turn away from the sins and the foul and misguided ways by themselves because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He guides the people by way of their faith. يَهْدِيهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِإِيمَانِهِمْ Their Lord guides them by way of faith. So the way for the child to be guided and safe from the avenues of deviation and misguidance and the shubuhat and the doubts and misconceptions and innovations and the evil and the misguided desires that are impermissible and lusts that are foul and lowly and the base desires that are haram and impermissible the way for the child to leave them and stay away from them or to repent if they fall into them is that they know Allah and they remember Allah and they believe in Allah and that faith will carry them to avoid these sins or to repent from them if they fall into them. In this manner, a person can go straight. So therefore, this creed it must be cultivated in the heart of the child. Ya Bunayya, innaha in taku mithkhala habbatin min khardalin fatakun fi sakratin aw fi samawati aw fi al-ardi Yati bi Allah, that oh my beloved son, oh my beloved child, that even if there's something that is the weight of a mustard of a mustard seed, the grain of a mustard seed, and it's even found in the middle of a rock, or it's anywhere in the heavens or in the earth, indeed Allah, He will bring it. Meaning that that is not lost and it will not be neglected. Rather, that will be taken to account, whether it's major or whether it's small. That whoever works the smallest amount uh, of good, he will see it and he will be held accountable for that and he will have a reward for that with Allah. And likewise, whoever works the smallest amount of evil, then likewise he will see that and he will be taken to account for that. He'll be taken account for that. So to cultivate in the heart 
of the child, the belief in the tawheed of Allah and the power and authority of Allah and his attributes that are perfect, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and likewise that he's worthy of worship to cultivate the fear of Allah in the heart of the child and likewise the remembrance of the hereafter that there's a reality after this life and there's accountability after this life and that which we say and we do is not left without any checking or without any responsibility or accountability but rather there's a great day that we will all stand and we'll be held accountable for our actions and deeds. To cultivate this in the heart of the child is of utmost importance. This is a pillar from the pillars of faith. <inaudible> to believe in Allah and to believe in the last day, to believe in the Jannah, to believe in the Nar, to believe in the standing and the accountability, to believe in the haram, to believe in the haram, to believe in that which is permissible and that which is impermissible, and to work by that belief. In this manner, the child can be upright and, and have great benefit for itself and be beneficial for others by their permission of Allah. By their permission of Allah. Inna Allah latifun khabir. Inna Allah latifun khabir. Indeed, Allah He is latifun khabir, the most subtle, aware of all things. The most subtle and aware of all things, aware of the most minute details. Allah Azza wa Jal, He has supreme and complete, ultimate and encompassing knowledge of all things. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. The beautiful and wonderful advice of Luqman, the Wasiyah, it continues. Ya Bunayya, aqim al salata wa amur bil ma'rufi wa anha an al munkar wa asbir ala ma asabaka wa asbir ala ma asabaka inna dhalika min azm al umur. And oh my beloved son, Ya Bunayya, aqim al salat. You have to establish the prayer. You have to establish the prayer, meaning that you must learn how to pray properly. As the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَصَلُّوا كَمَا رَأَيْتُمُونِ أُصَلِّي And pray in the manner you have seen me pray. So therefore you must be diligent likewise to learn how the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed in order for you to teach your child to pray in that manner so that the child likewise can establish that prayer in the proper manner. Praying in the manner inwardly and outwardly as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, يَا بُنَيَّ أَقِمْ Salah. Oh my beloved son, oh my beloved child, you have to establish the prayer. He didn't say salli, pray, la, establish the prayer. Establish it inwardly and outwardly, performing its conditions properly and correctly for the sake of Allah, hoping for his reward, and likewise establishing the pillars and the obligations and the recommended affairs that will perfect and beautify the prayer, inwardly and outwardly. Ya bunayya, aqim as salah. Wallahi, this is amazing advice, great and beneficial advice. And this is what this noble woman, she is advising you, my noble sister, to advise your child with. This is something that you must be upon first before you can advise and admonish your child with that. This is an indication that you must learn these affairs and be, and be diligent to cultivate the belief, of, the belief in Allah and in the last day in your heart, my noble sister. And likewise, for you to learn how to pray property in the manner of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya bunayya, aqim as-salata wa amur bil ma'rufi wa anhaan al-munkar wa asbir ala ma asabaka inna dhalika min azm al-umur. Oh my beloved child, oh my beloved son, establish the prayer. Establish the prayer and order the people with goodness and forbid them from the evil. Likewise from the advice and the guidance and direction of Luqman for his child is that what he must be from those who order the good. They know that which is good. They know that which is obligatory. They know that which, that which is recommended. They know that which is good. They know that which is obligatory. They know that which is recommended. They know how to perform that. And they know whenever it's not being performed properly. And they know when it's violated. And therefore they're able to admonish and advise the people and direct them to that. Because they're aware of it themselves. And likewise they are upon it themselves. So whenever they see those rights being violated or neglected, they will order the people to perform them. And this requires for a person to know those rights and those good ways and likewise to know how to perform them and to know how to advise others as well because some people they want to order the good but the way they do that is bad and therefore they bring more harm than good because of ignorance and because of having a strong zeal or concern without any light or knowledge to direct them and to guide them so to learn the ma'roof and the good from the obligations and the recommended affairs of the religion and to learn how to perform them properly and to know whenever they are neglected and and to know how to admonish and advise others properly. Because some people, they want to advise and direct others, but in reality, they wind up running them away with their bad and foul and lowly manners. 
with their bad and foul and lowly manners. So to order the good, it requires for a person to have patience and to have kindness and to have gentleness and likewise to have diligence and sincere and a good intention, hoping that the person will benefit. So therefore they will present the advice in the direction in the easiest manner, hoping that the individual would accept the advice. And likewise, the same affair with regards to forbidding the evil. To forbid the evil requires for a person to know that which is evil, to know that which is haram, and to know the levels of that, to know that which is from the major sins, to know that which is an invalidator of al-Islam, or that which is from the major sins, and that which is from the minor sins, and that which is incumbent to, the vo to avoid at all times, so on and so forth. And then likewise, know how to avoid that, and also know how to reprimand others in a manner that will be beneficial without running them away or turning them from the truth or causing them to have uh, hard feelings and a hard heart towards the people of goodness, towards the people of goodness. So it's one thing to order the good and to command the evil, but this is no doubt this is an obligation, but a person he has to learn. A person, they have to learn how to do that, how to order the good, and likewise how to to forbid the evil. All of this is of utmost importance, and this is from the advices and the commandments here. And the one who's going to order the good and, and forbid the evil, then no doubt, even if he did that with the most beautiful intention, with the greatest of sincerity and purity in his heart, hoping nothing but good for that person, no doubt he's going to experience some type of harm. Because the people, whenever they're upon a path contrary to the correct path, their hearts become corrupted and their hearts become attached to their whims and desires and that which they're accustomed to. And whenever a person orders them with good, many times they will reject that and not accept it because they're attached to following their desires and their ways. Or if a person prohibits them from evil, likewise, the same, the same uh, issue will occur. Their hearts are attached to those ways that they are familiar with or that they that, that they like and that they prefer and uh, it's difficult for a sick heart many times to accept the truth immediately even if sometimes later the, the advice would benefit them after some time whenever they reflect they, they reflect and think about it whenever they reflect and think about it the point is now that the one who orders with the good and forbids the evil he must be ready to experience some type of difficulty and hardship some difficulty and hardship. So therefore, the advice continues, وَصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكَ That you must be patient with, that which, with, with regards to that which befalls you. And from the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal, and likewise from the hardships uh, that one faces in that path, and ordering the people with good and forbidding them from evil. From evil. إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ This is from the most important and the most great, uh, and this is from the greatest and most important of all fear, all of all affairs. That indeed, this is from the, the greatest and most important of, of all affairs. And then the, the advice continues: وَلَا تُصَعِرَ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ And that you must not turn your cheek away from the people out of arrogance and pride. لَا تُصَعِرَ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ and you do not uh, turn your face away from the people in arrogance and in pride. Do not turn your face away from the people in arrogance and in pride. And you're looking at the people uh, with arrogance and pride and looking down upon them. He's for forbidding his child from being arrogant and from being boastful and looking down on the people and belittling them and turning away from them in pride. And don't walk throughout the land likewise in pride and arrogance, being boastful. And then, likewise, he mentioned the wisdom behind that. Inna Allah la yuhibbu kulla muhtarin fakhur. Because indeed, Allah, He does not love every individual who is boastful and arrogant. Because indeed, Allah, He does not love every individual who is boastful and arrogant. So this is also from the great advice and also the most beneficial methodology in raising and cultivating the child that you couple the prohibition or the command by the mention of the love of Allah that you should pray for example oh my beloved son oh my beloved daughter barakallah feek you have to establish the prayer you're coming of age indeed Allah he loves those who pray Allah, He loves the prayer and He loves those who pray. And there's a great reward for that in this life and the hereafter. Oh, my beloved child, this affair here is not allowed. This game that you want to play is impermissible. Or this garment that you want to wear is not allowed. This is something that's not pleasing to Allah. Allah, He does not like that. And He does not like the people who act like that. So to remind 
the child of that which is beloved to Allah and likewise of that which is detestful to Allah in order to encourage the child to perform the actions that are beloved and to avoid and stay away from the actions that are detestful. This is from the most beautiful and beneficial manner. And again, this is also cultivating the tawheed of the heart and the child at the same time. Do not walk around arrogantly. Do not be boastful. Do not belittle the people. Do not act like you're better than others. Do not walk around thinking that you're better than others and belittling them and looking down upon them. Because Allah, he does not love those who do that. Because Allah, he does not love those who do that. And then he says, وَقْصِدْ فِي مَشِّكَ وَقْبُدْ مِنْ سَوْتِكَ إِنَّا أَنْكَرَ الْأَسْوَاتِ لَسَوْتُ الْحَمِيرِ After forbidding him and uh, telling him uh, after forbidding him and advising him not to be arrogant and not to be boastful and not to walk through the land in this manner belittling the others and turning his face up away from others from in pride and turning his face away from others in pride now he admonished him after that to be humble and to be nice and to be kind. Walk sifi mashika. Rather be moderate in the way that you walk. Do not walk proudly. Do not walk pridely. Do not walk in a manner thinking that you're better than others and uh, the likes like this, but rather walk in a moderate manner. You should not also walk in a manner where, where, where one is weak, especially the especially the the male, especially the boys. Rather, they should not walk likewise like a woman or in a manner like, like he's very weak and, or he's lost. Rather, walk in a moderate manner, in a manner of moderation. Walk as a young boy. Walk as a young man who has purpose and knows why he is created. And uh, walk in a manner of dignity like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. min sawtika. And lower your voice. Meaning, do not speak with a loud voice and a harsh voice and a rude voice and a foul tone in a, in a tone of belittlement or in a tone of arrogance and pride. Rather speak with a lower voice, a voice that is humble and proper. Inna ankar al-aswati la sawtu al-hamir. Again, to clarify the reason why. And this is because the the voice or the sound of the donkey is the worst and most despicable of all sounds. Meaning the one who is speaking uh, with his voice high, raising his voice over the people, belittling them, or speaking with a tone that is harsh. Whether they realize it or not, if they're doing this, then here they are being compared to, like, to the voice of a donkey. And this is from the most despicable and lowly of all, of all voices, of all sounds, that anyone will be compared to this. So a person who should not be rude or be harsh or use a tone that is a tone of belittlement or a tone of harshness or being sharp and the likes like this because all of this is a sign of arrogance in the person that whenever they speak they raise their voice over others and whenever they speak they speak down with a tone of belittlement towards others and some people they'll do this and they have become so accustomed to this and that pride has sunk in their hearts to an extent that they don't even realize it what he ever been that so the advice here is Lower your voice. And you speak with a tone of humbleness. Speak with a tone that is peaceful. Speak with a tone that is direct. A person, maybe he needs to admonish somebody. Maybe he needs to advise somebody. Maybe he needs to check somebody. But he should do that without having a tone of belittlement. Or having a, a, having a tone uh, of degradation. Or speaking in a manner where one feels supreme and above the individual. Rather, to be humble and to be kind. All of this is from the advice that Luqman is giving to his son and all of this is from that which he is advising for you, my noble sister, to give advice to your child. So the people of knowledge, they say, فَاقِدُ الشَّيْءِ لَا يُعْطِيهِ The one who does not have something, he cannot give anything. So before you can advise your child with the likes of these affairs, my noble sister, you must first show concern with learning them yourself and being upon them and implementing them in your life so this is an indication my noble sister that you have to be diligent to learn you have to find time in your life for learning and sitting in the likes of these classes and not simply sitting in the class but rather taking notes and even possibly after that if possible reviewing the class again until you learn the information and the benefits they become they become a, a part of you and then you apply them in your life and then you become upright just as Allah, he mentioned about those who truly follow the religion, the deen of Allah, Sibrat Allah, wa man ahsanu min Allahi sibra. That the religion of Allah is called Sibrat, it's the deen of Allah. But Sibrat is it, literally, it's a die. 
And what is intended is that the person who enters into Islam entirely and they embrace Islam wholeheartedly, it will affect them until it's seen in their life and their manners and their conduct and their speech and their dealings just like the dye is seen on the garment when it's dipped and soaked in in, in, in the dye. So the one who truly benefits from the knowledge is the one that the knowledge is seen from them. And the change is seen in their life, seen in their manners, that which was displeasing to Allah, that they were upon before, they stopped doing that. Those desires and those aims and goals that they had before that are contrary to the proper aims and goals of a Muslim who hopes to go to Jannah without any reckoning or accountability and without any punishment, they will change those goals and they will make their goals to be the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla and any and any other means that will be a mean to achieve that, this will be their new goals. And those previous goals and aims, they will be, they will be, they will be left for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. In this manner, you will benefit my noble sister. May Allah grant you success. Inshallah, we continue in the next class with uh, the points that uh, that precede. Hada wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wasallam.